Hello, this is Skylar, and welcome to Java Programming Lesson 3. Last time, we talked about variables. Today, we're going to talk about variable arithmetic. Today's lesson should be quick and easy, and rather nice, because arithmetic with programming is quite a lot like arithmetic in math. Alright, so I'm going to make a variable here called foo, and we're going to start doing some math. Joy! So I'm going to set foo equal to 5 plus 3. One thing I didn't mention before is that you can create a variable and then set it equal to something on the same line, which is what I'm doing here. So foo equals 5 plus 3. This is how you would add numbers in programming. And then for subtraction, I'm going to say foo equals 5 minus 3. There's subtraction. Then last, last we have multiplication, which is 5 times 3. Multiplication is the asterisk character. And then division, foo, is equal to 5 divided, or the slash character, divided by 3. So here's addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. Let's go ahead and print this out so we can see our math in action. I'm going to print out foo in all positions here. And let's make sure that math is still working, shall we? So we can see here 5 plus 3 prints out 8. Then 5 minus 3 prints out 2. 5 times 3, 15. And 5 divided by 3 is 1, right? Right. Oh, who's paying attention? All right, 5 divided by 3 is definitely not 1. It should actually be 1 and 2 thirds, or 1.6666 repeating. Why it turned it into 1, though, is because foo we declared to be an integer value. And integers can only hold whole numbers, 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on. So when we gave it a 1 and 2 thirds, it just chops off the decimal place. Some people kind of expect the computer to round up because, you know, 1.6 should round up to 2, but no, the computer just chops it off, truncates past the decimal place, and we end up with 1. So if we want to have our decimal place, we could either change foo to be a double, or what I'm going to do is I'll make a new variable called bar, which is a double. Now this is going to be closer. Now I run it, and it prints out 1.0. It's cool. It knows we should have a decimal place, but why is it still keeping it 1? This is now because the numbers 5 and 3 are integers in the computer. And so when the computer divides two integers, 5 and 3, it chops off the decimal place. So we have to force the computer, tell it, hey, these are decimal numbers. We want decimals, so give it 5.0 and 3.0. And now, here we go, we get our decimal places we were looking for. Great. So now, there's basic arithmetic. Here are a couple other nifty things we can do with variables. I'm going to make three variables here. I'm going to set A equal to 10. Then I can make B equal to A times 2. So you see, I'm using the variables in the declaration of the variables. So C, I can then set equal to A plus b. Something even more strange that you can do with variables is you can say a is equal to a plus 1. Now this statement mathematically is truly horrendous because it's obviously false. a cannot equal a plus 1. However, in programming, if I were to print out the value of a before and after this line, you can see what it is it's doing. So a equals 10 first. Then after we run this, a equals 11, because we have set 10 plus 1, 11, and stored it into a. So it's now one larger than it used to be. So here's some neat tricks for number values. But now let's talk about strings and characters. So I'm going to make a string called foo, set it equal to 5. I'm going to make a string called bar, and set this one equal to 3. So then what if I make a string called foo bar and set it equal to foo plus bar? And then I print out foo bar. What is this going to print out? Aha! 5 plus 3. 53. Perfect, right? Or wait, actually, no, I think they messed up on that math a little bit. Actually, quite a lot. Because <laughs> you can see what it's doing here is instead of actually adding the numbers 5 and 3, it's just tacking the character 5 in front of the character 3. This is what happens when you add strings, because really, 
the computer doesn't know how to do anything else with strings. If you tried multiplying two strings, it gets confused. Subtracting, confused. Division, likewise. You can only add strings together, but this is actually very useful. Um, I can come down here, I'm going to set foo equal to, this is the first part. And then bar equal to, this is the second part. Ooh, and something I haven't mentioned up to now, even though I've been doing it, is notice that I'm using foo down here, but I have not redeclared it from up here. This is because you only have to make the variable box a single time. So I made the variable box foo in the beginning, and then I can keep using the variable foo as long as I want. It's already been created. I do not need to make it again. Um, but down here, I can do a printout of foo equals plus foo. Something like this, which will print out foo equals. This is the first part. And then I can do same thing with bar. And what you can see, though, is that before, when we wanted to print out a variable and a header, we had to use the print function followed by the print line function. This makes it all in one line, much prettier, easier to handle, um, very nice. You can actually do this with integer and double value. So like if I have an integer called the area and it's set equal to 12, I can then do a printout of area equals plus area. And now when I run this, it says area equals 12. Now even though this is an integer, Whenever you add an integer and a string, or you add pretty much anything in Java with a string, it turns this, or treats this, as a string and prints out what it's equal to. So now you can do some pretty neat things with variables, and this is where I'm going to end for today. Next up, though, we're going to start making much more dynamic programs, so look forward to that. I'll see you next time.